Today I'm going to show you how I make an oval shaped hand built utensil holder. So I started off, I'm starting off with this slab that I measured out uh, based on a utensil holder that I had that I wanted to make bigger. So I make a one that was bigger than it. So I measured the size of that holder, decided how much bigger I wanted to make it. And then using my shrink ruler, I figured out based on my clay shrinkers, which is 14%, what size um, slab I needed. And this slab is 19 and a half inches by um, eight and a quarter inches. And I cut it out. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend them. Really great. Cut it out using this. So this is 19 and a half this way, 18 and a quarter this way. So I have prepared the slab the way I do all my slabs. I've compressed it and, you know, with a rib going in both directions on both sides and it's ready to go. So I have, it's a good idea to decide ahead of time what you, what decoration you want to put on it on here. So I'm going to use this roller that I made based on a video I watched of Amy Sanders. And if you want to know how to make it, you should watch her video. It's great. Um, and then I have two other ones. This actually, I think I might even have gotten this idea watching her video and um, this leaf stamp. So these are bisque stamps of mine that I've made, but you can, you know, you can use stamps that you purchased from some, someone or stamps that you made of your own. Anyway, so I'm going to start off by using this roller just to make a little kind of bottom pattern. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. And really, I mean, they're kind of the same at the moment. Top and bottom don't really matter. And then I'm going to take this rubber tip tool, has a little clay on it, and I'm going to make some lines that are going to be sort of like branches or I guess that's what you would call them of different lengths going in different directions and maybe some of them will have two branches on them you know kind of all depends on what you want to do okay and there's two ways to do this I could have probably started by putting the little I probably should have done that. Put the little flowers down first. And then did this, but that's okay. It still works. So if you want to know how I make this stamps, you can watch. I have a video on how to do that. And I think it's fun because one, you get to even if even if this is based on somebody else's stamp, which it the design is, um, it's my own version of that stamp, and you know you you kind of personalize your um, something. You know, like if you made a swirl based on you know somebody else's swirl, it would still be your own swirl, and I think that's kind of fun. So here's my. You want to lift it up because it's stuck a little. Here's my decoration. Oh, that's fun. And I think, oh, and then I'm going to put some leaves. I have this leaf stamp, so I'm going to add some leaves to this. But maybe I'm not. Maybe this is simple enough as it is. I don't know. It's kind of hard to decide. <laughs> leaves are fun. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it alone. Sometimes less is more or better. All right, so I've got my decoration. I'm going to take my finger along the edges just to smooth them out a little. And then using this uh, tool, I've used this before in other videos, I'm going to cut um, 45 degree angles on each side. I'm going to cut it on one side. And then I'm going to flip the slab over and cut it on the other side. Then I'll be able to join them at the same uh, angle and then you won't get like that extra clay if you didn't cut it you'd get all this extra clay and you'd have like a fat section on your join okay so I'm going to score both sides and it's a little rough so I'm going to just take my finger along the edge because this part is actually going to be visible when the two sides fold so 
this is in the inside so it's not as big a deal but it's still nicer to do that and then we'll score I mean slip and my slip is a mixture of um, toilet paper and you know dry clay and water I it, it works well for me I know people do all kinds of things vinegar some people swear by just water okay so uh, this slab has been sitting for a while this one's a little bit floppy but you can see that it stands up which it wouldn't if it was right out of the bag so now you have to decide where you want your joint to be I like my well we can join it and then play with the shape but I like my joint to be sort of like the one-third of the side so that it's you can see the join but it's not right at the center of the um, the part you're looking at so I like to wiggle a little to get it to join and then using finger on the inside and the outside go up the side all right and uh, this one joined pretty well so it's good so there you go you can see it um, I would take my rubber tip tool maybe I'll wait to do it but you can see it on the outside just go up along the edge just kind of seal it a little and then I take my finger just soften it you can rub that whole thing out if you want I, I like to leave it there so it's a personal choice on what you want to do so this is a little floppy but we're gonna do this anyway now so next thing I need is piece of clay for the bottom. I don't think this is big enough, but if I roll it a little, maybe it will be. No, that's too small. Let's not be stingy with our clay. All right, so this should work. Yeah, all right, I'm going to just cut a piece off here. Yeah, okay. Okay, so this piece, just like the rest, have been, um, this is actually from the big slab that this piece came from. So it's about the same thickness, compressed. Um, so now we want to put the slab onto the, I mean, we want to put this face on the bottom of it. So I'm going to try to turn this over without making too much of a mess. Oh, so I haven't really set the shape up yet because it's it's you know it's pretty soft so I can still work with it. Um, so now I'm going to try to get the oval base that I want to get. So there we go, the oval shape, and just going to put a little bit of slip on here so that I can use it to. Well, you'll see in a moment. So put a little slip. Hopefully that's in view of the camera, and then just in case I'm going to move this over a little. Okay, so I've got slip on here, and I'm going to take my slab, and I'm just going to place it on here. And that'll give me a mark to work with, just to give an idea of the size. Okay, now I'm going to get my banding wheel. Makes it a little bit easier. Move this out of the way. And where's my knife? And now I'm going to just cut a little outside the edge of where the slip mark is because I want to have a little extra clay to roll over when I attach it to the base. You'll see how that works. Okay. Now I've got an oval. Okay. I'm going to smooth out the edges a little bit. One of the things I like about this is it's kind of a loose process. You know, you're not trying to make an exact perfect oval here. It's just fun. Okay, so I'm going to pick what's the bottom of my piece. And before I attach it, I'm going to do a little decorating. So let's try. Where's my... Where did my stamp go? There it is. Okay, so let's this time I'm going to put a few of these down for, oh, not on here because this makes marks. Okay. So 
I'm just going to put a few of these. Might have some go over the edge. And then, oops. <laughs> okay. And then I think I'm just going to connect them with a little line, just for fun. So now I have this design on here, and I'm also going to use my signature stamp, which I put down here somewhere. Okay and do all of this now. So there we go. Okay. So then take that. We're going to slip and score everything. Some people score and then slip and some people slip and then score. I tend to score and slip. I don't remember who I first saw using a brush to put slip on, but I thought it was such a great idea. And uh, that's what I do. Can't even remember what I used before I used a brush. All right. Okay, so now move this off here and put the oval on here. I think I have to move this back a little so that you can see what I'm doing. Let me check the camera. Let's lift it up just a tad. Okay. So, now I'm going to just make sure that it's in the oval shape that I want. And it is. We won't worry about the other side yet. Um, we'll fix that when we flip it back over. And I'm going to put this on here. And, you know, if I was really careful I would have figured out exactly where I had it originally but I keep messing up the shape anyway so I don't think it much matters all right now I'm going to take a pony roller and pat it down a little bit and then I'm going to roll uh, along the edge and over so that it just kind of folds the clay over the side of the utensil holder Hopefully you can see this. I'm doing this with the hand. I don't normally, I mean, I'm, I'm right-handed, but I would normally be doing it on the other side. So, this clay is a little soft. It'd be nice if it was a little stiffer, but, you know, is your clay ever just the way you want it to be? Mine never is. And then I'm just going to flatten it as I go around. And that, you can sort of play with the shape a little to get it into the shape you want. Here I have a little dent. Okay, I know I've kind of made a mess of the other side. Now we're gonna flip it over. Oops, move that out of the way. Turn it so you can see the line. This is really soft. Okay, that's pretty good. Oh, one more thing. Let me move that here for a minute. The banding wheel. I'm going to put this on the banding wheel and then using my um, rubber tool I'm going to just kind of seal it where it's um, meeting the base where that uh, part I rolled over is. And I like the unevenness too. That's the other reason I don't worry too much about what shape that oval is. Oh, and then that oval is when I put it on because I like the sort of wavy line I'm getting. And then I just take my finger and kind of press it up against there because I sort of pushed it out a little. And then the la then and then do that on the inside. Get a nice seal. Not that this is going to hold water, but it's still nice or liquid to get a good seal. So at this point. You can take a sponge. Oop, I don't know if you can see the top. Let's move this out of the way. <laughs> it's a little floppy. You can take a sponge and just, you know, kind of smooth out the 
I'm sort of pinching between my fingers. And you might have to wait if your clay is as soft as mine is to really get it um, nice and smooth. But I think that's, that's fine. And you want to make that edge nice. And you want to fix your oval and let it dry slowly. Because with hand building, it's uh, better to let it dry slowly so that all the joins are connected well. So that's how I make an oval utensil holder. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.